Well, we want to go ahead and welcome everyone here tonight. Can we just give the Lord a good hand of praise? We want to take a moment tonight to welcome all of our online viewers viewing us through YouTube and uh, other uh, social media platforms tonight. And uh, my name is Pastor Anthony. My wife and I pastor the church here in Victory Outreach, Fremont. And right now I'm coming to you live from my very own living room. And I'm surrounded here with an awesome group of people tonight. Can we just give the Lord one more good hand? All of the life group leaders right now are currently meeting as well, having different watch parties. And uh, I understand maybe some of you are by yourself or your home with your husband or your wife um, are with family members this evening. And again, we just want to welcome all of you for uh, wel uh, welcome all of you for coming out this evening and joining us for our Friday night unplugged service. And uh, this is the way we're going to be doing church uh, for the next few weeks or until further notice. But I think it's pretty cool, man, that we're able to still continue uh, preaching. We're, we're still able to uh, connect. And I know that the new term now is uh, social distancing is the new term now. Uh, but social distancing should not uh, prevent us from connecting spiritually. And uh, that's one thing we're doing here this evening. So we're going to go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get into a time of praise and worship. And you can join us right where you're at this evening. And uh, let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Father, we come before you, Lord, this evening. And I want to lift up this Friday night service to you, this unplugged version of our Friday night experience, God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would be with everybody that is at their homes and uh, at their places tonight, God. And you would use tonight's message to just bring uh, clarity and you would bring peace, Lord, upon Victory Outreach Fremont and all of those who are listening as well. And tonight we are so careful to give you all the honor and all the glory. And it's in Jesus' name. And everybody together said, Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together one more time. And join us in a time of praise and worship.
Come on, just lift up your hands all over this place. Father, we lift you up. Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence that is not only felt in this room, but I know it is also being felt by every ear and everybody that is worshiping with us tonight. And so, Lord, I pray that you would meet all of our needs tonight. Spiritual needs, emotional needs, physical needs, every need that needs to be met, God, I pray tonight. Lord, I pray for healings in this world, this virus, Lord, that seems to have the upper hand, but I pray, Lord Jesus, nothing is as strong as your blood. So I plead the blood of Jesus upon this world, upon every country, upon the United States, upon the Bay Area, the Tri-Cities, Fremont, Newark, and also Union City. And Lord, we are so careful to give you all the honor and we give you all the glory. And it's in Jesus' name. And everybody together said, Amen, amen and Amen. Well, this is what you call making the best out of a bad situation. And uh, once again, we want to welcome everybody here that is here with me tonight. And again, all of our church family uh, that are online with us here tonight via Facebook, YouTube, and uh, our other social media platforms. And we just, on behalf of my wife and I and Helica, we just want to welcome all of you for coming out here tonight. And, you know, this is something that we immediately begin to put the plan together uh, as things on Monday went, went from bad to worse. And so as we made the adjustments, I'll be honest with you, um, we immediately started working towards our leadership and we immediately started working through all of our life group leaders and everybody began to roll up their sleeves and work hard to make tonight possible and even to make this entire weekend possible. So I want you to thank all of those that work behind the scenes, man, to make this possible. Our media team, our worship team, our life group leader team, and uh, for just making this possible, man. And so again, we want to welcome everyone for coming out this evening. And so as we uh, go into Sunday morning, I just want to be able to remind everybody that we're going to be right back here uh, at 10 a.m. It's almost like, is it a new church time here in Victory Outreach Fremont? Yeah, it's like a 10 a.m. service. We never thought we would say that. But uh, that's what's going to be happening uh, for this weekend on Sundays. You could tune in live uh, with us and uh, join us for that 10 a.m. service. And uh, 9.30, I believe, we'll, we'll start kicking, kicking the um, YouTube on live, and you could join us by there, uh, by that way. And um, also, uh, all of our life groups here locally, um, as of right now, <laughs> will continue. Um, if anything changes in this upcoming week or things get a little bit more severe, we want to be able to honor what our governments and our local city officials are saying and uh, we'll make the proper adjustment, and we'll do that uh, through email and texting and all that, all that good stuff that uh, that we're able to mobilize our church uh, with. And um, we were able to meet this week earlier. I believe it was uh, maybe Wednesday with Pastor Sonny and the eldership of Victory Outreach International, and uh, they were able to let us know that. World Conference 2020 is going to be postponed. Everyone say, oh, man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be rescheduled sometime next year or even the year after. And again, we'll let you know um, about that. And so um, keep, keep posted on that. Uh, but we will continue to move forward. And any other events conferences that Victor Outreach has, 
uh, I'm sure will also be postponed as well. But um, we want to continue to do what we do here in Victory Outreach Fremont and uh, meet through our social media and also through also our YouTube. And so uh, tonight I have a message that I want to be able to share with all of us. It's a message that I believe is on time for uh, where we're at. And, you know, um, no one really expects things like this, obviously, to happen. But when they do, we want to make sure that, uh, that we're prepared and prepared as possible. But before we get into the message that I have for you here today, I want to go ahead and do something really special, okay? Um, and what I mean by that is I want to be able to pick up, pick up tonight's offering. Somebody get excited about that. We're excited here, man, at my house, in my living room. Praise the Lord. Um, but I hope you're excited, those of you who are watching too as well, because it's our desire that, you know, we would continue to become strong. If you think about it, this is what we've been built to do here in Victory Outreach Fremont. This church started in a living room. And here we are, back in a living room. Amen. Your living room, my living room. Someone even said that uh, um, I should have brought the ironing board out today. <laughs> I might do that on Sunday, man. Don't tempt me. But the scripture that I'm reminded of is a famous one. But I'm going to tell you right now, it seems to have a little bit more weight tonight. And it's found in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. And I'm quite sure all of us can quote it. All of us can say it. But it's a scripture that says, Bring the whole tithe to the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And I like this. He says, Test me. So everyone say, Test me. If there's ever a time where the church is being tested, it is right now at this very moment. Yes. Our faith is being tested. Uh, our church is being tested. The body of Christ is being tested. And I'm going to tell you a real area where we're tempted slash tested in right now is to hold back in this specific area of our giving. My advice to you would be don't hold back. Matter of fact, I think the church should even rise up more and say, okay, God, if you're asking me to test you, then, then, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you to your word and I'm going to become a generous giver. In a time that seems unreal, the church is going to rise up like never before. Here in Fremont, we've been talking about revival. We've been talking about ankle deep, waist deep, all the way in. Well, um, all those ankle deep seasons... And all those waist deep seasons are over. Now is the season to really see who's all the way in. And so right where you're at, if you're here uh, online with us on YouTube, I want you to go ahead and uh, give. If you're at a life group, um, we've already provided some of the envelopes for you. I know uh, some of us still like to give that way, by way of envelope. Um, but most of us... Um, are able to pick up our smartphones and we're able to text 77977 to VO Fremont. Send it. It'll go ahead and text you back. And uh, it's an easy, safe way to give your tithe and also your offering. You could also visit our website. Take a moment right now to visit our website, vofremont.org. And you could also visit the giving icon right there or download our app. If you haven't been able to download our app at, our, uh, at your app store on your smartphone, well, I want to challenge you to go ahead and do so right now. Um, and I believe all of us can test God tonight on our first weekend of mobile church. Come on, somebody. And so, um, Victor Outreach Fremont, let's continue to be faithful in this area. I can still see you. You better smile in your living room, man. I know you're... You're grinning. You probably went to the bathroom right now. Yeah, there's no bathroom breaks right now. Everyone's focused. And uh, we're going to go ahead and give to the Lord here today and be blessed. I want you to tell your neighbor, be blessed. Come on, I can hear you. Say, be blessed. Praise the Lord. So I know you're preparing your offering still. I'll give you just a few more minutes. 
I'll be honest with you, there's been people coming to our house, uh, knocking on the front door with envelopes saying, Pastor, I know, I don't know what to do, uh, but I'm dropping off my tithe and my offering. And, you know, it's just really crazy just to see how, how, how serious we've become and how important this area of our life is, um, especially uh, today. Amen? Amen. So we're going to go ahead and say a word of prayer for our tithe and offering here in Victory Outreach Fremont. And uh, we're believing God for great things. Father, we pray today, God, that you would receive this tithe and offering uh, into your hands. Um, I know that we're doing church a lot different today. And so I pray, Lord Jesus, that, that you would continue to honor us honoring you. Uh, circumstances will not dictate our praise. Circumstances will not dictate our worship. Circumstances will not dictate the way we get together while we can, God, Lord Jesus. But I pray, Lord, that, uh, and also circumstances will not dictate the way we give. And so I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would just begin, the church at large would begin to break records this weekend, God, with those that are participating, those that are reached, and especially in the area of giving. I pray every church, God, would, uh, would, would, would record record, record giving, God, this weekend because we're honoring you through this season. And we are so careful to give you all the honor and all the glory. And it's in Jesus' name. And everybody together said? Amen. Amen. God bless you as you gave to the Lord here tonight. And so as they go ahead and collect that this evening, and we prepare ourselves tonight for God's word, I want you to go ahead and um, take out your Bibles or take out your devices. Or take, now it's okay to take out your phones in this setting. Now you can have your phone out uh, tonight. And uh, I want you to turn, turn your Bibles to the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 35. And the title of my message tonight is called How to Navigate Through Sudden Storms how to navigate through sudden storms. And here in this portion of scripture we're going to read here tonight, it's uh, probably one you've heard a lot, but I really feel tonight it's going to become more alive to us as we are in the season that we're in this evening. And so Mark chapter 4, verse 35, if you're there, give me a loud amen. amen. And if you're visiting us through YouTube, just shoot us a message Give us some emojis. I don't know how they do it on YouTube, but let us know you're out there, man. We want to know that we have also a live audience out there as well. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. Uh, the Word of God reads like this. It says, On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, Jesus says, Let us cross over to the other side. And now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as, as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose. Verse 37, some translations say, suddenly a storm. I want everybody that hears the sound of my voice here today to say that at the same time. Suddenly a storm. One more time. Say it again. Suddenly a storm. Sounds really good. Verse 37, and a great storm. Suddenly a storm arise, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling but he was in the stern Jesus and he was asleep on a pillow and they awoke him and they said to him teacher do you not care that we are perishing verse 39 then he arose he rebuked the wind and said to the sea this is really good right here peace be still I really feel that the Lord is speaking to us here tonight and he's saying, I know you're in a storm. I know you're in a suddenly season within your life. I know things look hectic. The storm came on you and you didn't expect it. But the Lord is saying tonight to all of us and to that storm and even to the coronavirus, peace, peace. be still. <clears throat> and the Bible says the wind ceased and there was a great calm. How many thank God for that? But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Fear and faith there, okay? And they feared exceedingly 
and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Again, Lord, I pray you would bless us tonight. Bless our hearts. I pray peace in a storm over all of us. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. I think that the church around the world this weekend uh, will be dealing with fear more than ever. If you look at your social media, you've probably been even tempted to put faith over fear. Or we've been seeing fear, don't let fear overcome your faith. And that's been the vibe that's going out um, lately. And so, uh, you know, rightfully so. But tonight I want to be able to encourage everyone this evening uh, on how important it is for us to navigate through these suddenly storms within our life. Number one, how to deal with these sudden storms within our life is we must, number one, understand that there is no guarantee against the sudden seasons within our life. Just because we're Christians now, just because we're saved now, just because, you know, uh, we're on the right side now, does not exempt us from experiencing these sudden seasons within our life. Um, let me remind you that although the sovereign Lord is in control um, and he is in our boat here today, there is still no guarantee of the sudden storms within our lives. Someone please say amen. amen. It is like been a mistaken notion, right? That uh, now that everything I do is just going to work out. Every financial endeavor I make is just going to work out. My kids, all of a sudden, are going to start being successful. Um, everywhere I put my hand is just going to work out. Everything is just going to work out on my, on my end. And sometimes we end, up, we end up disappointed because we don't understand that just because we're serving God that these storms are not going to affect us. If you and I were to take a look at Scripture and look in the Bible, we would see that there are many people, probably 99.9% .9 of the people in the Bible had some kind of sudden storm happen within their life. If you look at, if you look at the life of Joseph, Joseph went to prison. Uh, Job lost everything he had. Uh, Jeremiah was also put in prison. Paul was afflicted with the plague uh, that he basically had his entire life. And so we see here that uh, even the disciples, all of them except for one, were all basically killed, right? And that just goes to show us this evening that the, there's no guarantee against the sudden seasons within our life. Someone say amen. amen. Um, another way that we can navigate through the sudden seasons, number two, is that it may appear that God isn't doing anything. Right? It's easy to say, right, right now, God, where are you? Lord, where are you? Uh, we can't have church. Lord, where are you? Uh, we're getting shut down. Lord, where are you? Uh, I can't work right now. Come on, somebody. Lord, Help a brother out. How am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to pay my car? How am I going to feed these wonderful children of mine? How am I? How am I? How am I? Lord, where are you? And it's, sometimes it seems like, Lord, where are you? Um, and it doesn't seem like he's doing anything at all. And if we're not careful, we can feed into it. Uh, these experienced fishermen here in this portion of Scripture uh, were also frightened. I mean, you know, they were used to the winds. They were used to storms. This wasn't the first storm that they had been in. They were professional, seasoned veterans in the area of fishing. But yet still, when this storm comes, when a sudden storm hits your life, most likely we're not prepared for it. Most likely, you know, it catches us off guard. And we must understand here today that sometimes it seems like God isn't doing anything. But in life, okay, Things come at us that we cannot control. Some things come through uh, other people's actions. Some things come through because of our own actions. Uh, God seems to be silent, and we long for a word, don't we? 
And we see here in this portion of Scripture, what was Jesus doing? He's taking a nap on a pillow. Are you serious? Come on, Lord, don't you see my situation? Don't you see my anxiety? Don't you see what I'm going through? And it seems like Jesus is doing nothing. I like what one theologian wrote. Um, he said that the, sometimes the silence of God is actually God's greatest compliment towards you and towards me. Like these hardy fishermen, we protest, don't we? Seeming in the inaction of Jesus when he seems to be asleep at the will of our lives. Another way to navigate through these storms or these seasons in life is uh, we must understand that Jesus hears our cry. Oh, that's good news for us today. Jesus does hear our cry. Here we have the disciples frantic in a storm. Jesus, where are you? He's sleeping. He's on a pillow. He's taking a nap. And what do they do? They begin to cry out, man. And, and, and think about that for a minute. It wasn't the storm that woke him up. It wasn't the bashing winds and the motion of that boat slamming against the waves, rocking back and forth. I don't know if you've ever been on a, gotten seasick before. How many have gotten seasick before? Come on, guys. How many guys? I like the boat. I got seasick before. And it doesn't feel good. And, and here we have them. And none of that woke Jesus up. You know what woke Jesus up? It was the disciples' cry. So what is the Lord saying to us? He's saying, where's the church? The church that two months ago was probably asleep. He's been trying to wake us up. Revival. Hashtag revival. Hashtag blessed. Hashtag wake up. What did I preach here a few weeks ago? Hashtag woke. Got a lot of criticism. Whoa, woke. Whoa, pastor, aunt, woke. You're getting political now. No. Jesus, woke. Come on, somebody. And that's what maybe possibly is happening to the church right now, is that he wants us to cry out so that he could come to our rescue. See, we are to remember that although Jesus did not hear again the storm, he heard the disciples cry. We got to keep crying out. We got to keep crying out, man. Uh, there's, there's all kinds of different cries, if you look in the Bible, that got Jesus' attention. Uh, uh, blind Barnabas, right, cried out, Jesus, son of David. And he got his attention. And the Bible says that Jesus turned to him and just says, just because you cried out to me, that qualifies you for the healing. And Jesus even said, your faith, right? Not your fear, but he says, your faith has healed you today. I'm reminded of Hannah, who gave birth to Samuel. And her and Elkanah, her husband, they couldn't, they were struggling to have a child. And what did the Bible say? Hannah was, Hannah was praying. And she was praying so desperately, crying out to God so desperately, that, uh, that the priest, Eli, what did he do? He accused her of being drunk. Yeah. There's a drunk cry. Just kidding. <laughs> but there's a cry that is so desperate that it's misunderstood. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Her cry was misunderstood for something else. And, uh, and Eli thought she was, she was intoxicated. But she said, yeah, I'm intoxicated, all right. I'm intoxicated with a cry. I'm, I'm, I'm intoxicated with some desperation here. And because she cried out to God, got the attention of God, God blessed her with the son that eventually she gave back to God anyway. And so, and so Jesus does hear our cry. Come on, put your hands together tonight. And thank God that he hears our cry. Let me give you two more and then we're going to close. We're going to close tonight. Number four, another way to navigate your way through these storms is we must understand that sudden storms serve to turn us towards Jesus. I mean, you know, right now, there are a lot of hearts that are turning back to Jesus. 
Last Sunday, we were able to have church, uh, and we didn't know if we were going to be able to gather again after that. But some people stayed home for, for good reasons. Um, some came out just because they wanted, they wanted to. And, and even in our local church, we had, we had people coming that possibly hadn't been to church in a long time, man, uh, began to come. Because during this time, right now, we must understand that in storms and suddenly seasons, that people's hearts get turned right back towards Jesus. They serve to turn us towards him. Verse 38 says that. See, we can be so caught up in everything else, right? Think about it just uh, in January. That was two months ago, basically, right? Right? Your resolution, you were doing good. I'm doing good. I'm meeting all my, my resolutions. I'm, I'm exercising again. I'm, I completed the Daniel fast. I'm, I'm doing good now, Pastor. I'm, I, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And, and, and life has a way of etching Jesus out, doesn't it? Little by little, we're etching him out. We don't even realize it sometimes, right? He's, he's, not, he's, not, he's not at the center anymore, but he's, but he's still important to me, but he's just not as important to me. But all of a sudden, let something happen. Mm-hmm. Let something wake you up, wake us up, wake the, ch- wake the world up. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, you're on YouTube. <laughs> and you're, you're, now, you're now engaged in what Jesus is doing through the body of Christ. And uh, we need to be careful and know that, that these storms in life serve to turn us back towards Jesus. Fifthly and lastly tonight, uh, and how to navigate yourself through these sudden storms, is here's, here's, here's the good news, the best news ever. Okay, this isn't Fox or CNN, come on somebody, or your local KTVU. This is the good news tonight, and the good news is, is that storms don't last forever. Storms don't last forever. We just don't know how long they last or they're going to last. But when you're in the beginning of one or you're in the middle of one, man, it, uh, things get a little hard. But we can, we, can, we can rest assured tonight that this storm will not last forever. This story that we read here tonight for all of us is a story um, that tells a helpful truth that storms don't last forever. Um, in certain parts of the world, you know, where tornadoes come and um, different things happen like that, uh, it can happen just in a moment's notice. You know, people that live in the, in the, um, in the middle of the United States and are they're out in the ocean, these storms happen just like that, real fast, real fast. But if you talk to any of them, they'll let you know that these things, thank God, these things don't last forever. I like what Acts chapter 2, verse 17 in the New King James Version says. It says, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. So too will the turbulence of what's going on in the world today. Uh, The pain sometimes lingers, but we must understand that we must lean on the Holy Spirit today and depend on His power and depend on His presence and depend on His peace. As I get ready to close uh, tonight, I want to remind us what Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15 says. It's a scripture that I was reading earlier today and it really stuck out to me because we're talking about faith. We're talking about Anxiety. We're talking about all these things. And the Bible says in Ephesians 6.15 that we should have our feet shodded or shod with the preparation of peace. And what a strong, what a strong phase, uh, phrase, isn't that? Uh, to have our shoes of peace. That's a, that's a pretty unique phrase there that the Bible uses. But peace in this portion of scripture, in peace by definition, it speaks of tranquility. 
And what does tranquility mean? Tranquility means calm. And that's my prayer for myself, my family, my church, and all of you who are listening through YouTube as well tonight, is that we would all be prepared with the, with the, with the shoes of peace. The Bible even calls it the gospel of peace. You see, we must understand that peace and tranquility is, is actually a weapon in spiritual warfare. Because that's what that scripture is. It's a scripture of spiritual warfare. When we are forced with storms in our life, faced with storms in our life, when life's storms, life's trials, life's temptations, troubles, when they come upon us, we are to put the shoes of peace and tranquility and calmness on and in our lives. We got to make sure that we don't fall apart, guys. That's what I'm saying. Don't fall apart right now. Okay? These things are out of our control. The worst thing we can do is start falling apart, especially the church. <laughs> that was the time where we put every sermon we heard, we put every discipleship class we went to, we put every Veti class we attended, every Bible study we sat under, every world conference we went to, every Mighty Men of Valor, every woman's conference, everything we went to. Now is the time to put all of that into action. Can I just get an amen tonight? Amen. I feel like preaching now. Yeah. Don't fall apart. Tell your neighbor, don't fall apart. We don't go forth in fear. We don't fall into depression. We don't fall into discouragement. We don't fall into hopelessness. Come on, somebody. The Roman soldier, they wore boots uh, that had spikes, little nails on the bottom of them, much like a football cleat. We're, both, we're all familiar with that. Why did they do that? Because they understood that if a warrior was going to win, he or she had to have sure footing. Right now, we have to have sure footing in what we believe with wisdom. He had to have sure footing and he had to stand firm. Peace, let me just say this as I end. Peace is not the absence of problems. It is not saying that you will not have storms I will not have storms. You will not have storms in your life. But when we go into a storm, here's the key. Don't let the storm get into you. Don't fall apart right now. I know I said it, but I'm saying it again. You and I got to slip into these shoes of peace right now. We got to gird ourselves with these things. We got to plant our feet Stand firm. Don't fall apart. I've seen people, you've seen people, that they look solid. They look righteous. They look holy. Come on, somebody. But one storm comes along. Two storms come along. A storm like we're all in right now. You can't just say you're alone. Oh, I'm going through it. No, we're all going through it. Welcome to the party. This is what a real storm looks like. But this is also what real Christianity looks like. This is really what, what, it, what it looks like for, for us to say, man, no matter what, I'm going to continue to serve the Lord. I don't want to be that kind of man of God, that kind of Christian that, that looks good when everything is going good. But then all of a sudden, something, something happens and I begin to lose heart. And I begin to lose faith. Now listen, I know there's a lot of us tonight that, let's be honest, uh, I've had my moments of fear and anxiety and social distancing and all, all that. Because let's be honest, it feels like it's getting worse by the minute. But one thing we all have in common, and those of us who are even watching us through YouTube and online, 
is we, is we have the Lord, yes, but we also have each other. And what I want to do tonight is I want to be able to, uh, in a few minutes, pray. I want to pray for all of us for that fear and anxiety to, to not latch itself on us to the point where we all or some fall apart. And I believe that's a word for all of us tonight. Navigating ourselves through the storms in life. So could we sing that song, Tim, that you're going to listen if you're at your life group or you're watching us from the comfort of your own home tonight and you're there, maybe you're at work, maybe you're multitasking at home maybe you're with your life group or you're with some friends and family tonight listen I want you to join in for just a few moments with us this evening and let this song minister to you and then I'm gonna I'm gonna pray for each and every one of us this evening so right where you're at Right where you're at tonight, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to allow me to pray for you tonight. First of all, I want to pray for those that may be listening and you say, Pastor Anthony, I, I've been fearful. This fear has got the best of me and um, rightfully so. But tonight, I I want to replace my fear with peace. I don't want to lose control right now. I want to 
keep it together and put my trust in the Lord. Listen, I know that's easier said than done, but I will say this, it's, it's really possible. And so tonight, there may be even somebody here that you say, man, Pastor Anthony, I haven't been going to church. I've been wanting to. I just haven't had a chance to. But tonight you, you have or even you're watching this at a later time. And you're saying, man, God, this feels good to be connected. Man, this is what I've been missing. This is what I've been wanting. Well, the church has come to you. And no matter where you're at, even maybe you're connected to a church and you're connected here to Victory Outreach Fremont and you're even saying, man, as a believer, Pastor, I'm, fear and anxiety has also got, gotten a grip on me. Listen, I'm going to say a prayer for all of us. I want you to repeat it tonight and we're going to all repeat it together, right where you're at. Just, just repeat this prayer. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight, and I'm asking you to forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart and come into my life. I surrender everything to you right now. Help me to replace Peace, peace over fear. Over fear. Peace, peace over anxiety. Over anxiety. Speak, peace Speak peace over my storm. Over my storm. In, Jesus In Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray right now, God, for not only this group that is here, but also all of our live viewers and also those that maybe later we'll hear this broadcast. I pray for them as well. Lord, I pray for the body of Christ tonight, Lord, to be unified. And I pray for the body of Christ, God, to be able to stick it out and stick together, God. And I pray for unity like never before, God. I pray for every pastor, every pastor friend of mine, God. I pray for every church in the city of Fremont, the Bay Area, the United States tonight, God. We want to lift them up, Lord, and we pray peace in the midst of a storm. And we are so careful to give you all the honor and we give you all the glory. And it's in Jesus' name. And everybody together said, Amen. Amen. Can we just put our hands together? <laughs> For being able to make the best out of a bad situation. And so this one's on right here. All right. Praise the Lord. So again, we want to thank all of you who joined us uh, by in your living room and through our YouTube station. And, uh, you know, we never thought that we'd be doing church like this, but uh, we're making it happen and we're reaching people uh, through this. And so we'll be back on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, somewhere around 930 you'll be getting some notifications to let you know to start dialing in and um, we look forward to seeing you again uh, keep me in prayer and I'll keep your, you in prayer and uh, just know that Angelica and I love you guys and uh, we'll see you guys real soon come on can we put our hands together one more time tonight <laughs> praise the Lord well let's end let's end with a on a happy note tonight
Come on, give the Lord a good hand. See you Sunday, see you Sunday, see you Sunday. Are we still on? Can they still hear me? Get to church. Sunday, 10 o'clock. Should I just pass the mic around? I don't know what to do, man.